Thank you. So hello, everyone. Um, just before we start, I'm really interested who of you came only because of the name of this talk. <laughs> because I, I'm doing research. I'm interested whether the name sells or not. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm, I'm Jan. Uh, I'm a software engineer at NS1. And I would like to talk about a tool that we open source recently. It's called Flamethrower. And it's DNS performance testing tool. Um, this whole started uh, about two years ago. Um, we started working on a new like, custom DNS server for our company. And we needed to test particular features. And the existing, existing <coughs> tools, like DNSperf, uh, like Flamethrower is inspired by, by DNSperf, um, was, di didn't, didn't get every, or didn't contain everything we needed. Um, particular thing that we are interested uh, in was like source port distribution. DNS perf uses one single port. So when you actually want to test this uh, in some uh, real production setup, you realize that the traffic patterns are completely different uh, than from real clients. Um, we also uh, wanted something that has much better TCP support. And um, TCP, in general, in the DNS port, used to be a second class citizen. Uh, like, the support is not always perfect in DNS servers. So we needed a tool first uh, to test it, to make sure that our server works, works like well or as we expect. Uh, we also wanted uh, something that can generate realistic traffic patterns. And um, since the beginning, we wanted to integrate this tool into our CI CD pipeline. Um, because as you are working on a server adding feature, you are interested how the performance changes. Um, the Flamethrower lives uh, at GitHub uh, in a DNS org uh, like organization. Um, we open sourced it like uh, early this year at the beginning of January. Uh, DNS org for you don't uh, for uh, you who don't know the organization is uh, or the org stands for uh, Operations Analytic Research Center. It's a community of uh, of people uh, from like DNS world, so operators, software vendors. Um, top level domain, uh, like registrars and so on. So we are happy that uh, we can host this, this uh, project there. And um, shortly after we open sourced uh, uh, Flamethrower, um, DNSperf moved to DNS Arc as well. And yesterday, also DNS was moved there. So I think Flamethrower is in pretty good company. Um, so I would like to start with uh, just simple quick start, just to give you some idea what this tool does. Um, because later I will talk about some internal architecture, and um, I don't, I, I want you have to some idea how, how this uh, like <coughs> works from the user perspective. So um, on the left side there is some sample invocation of the of the utility. Uh, you run uh, the binary is called flame, and you give it some parameters. So in this case, uh, we are sending uh, some uh, queries to server uh, A and as example to test. And we are send, sending one same, same query over and over. Uh, the record name will be foo, uh, foo example the test, uh, and we query for the SOA type. Uh, the dash Q configures the query rate, so this means 2,000 queries per second. And uh, dash L it, like limits the execution time, so this will run for five seconds. And so, so the flame will like first output some some. Like basic information about what's, what's going on, and then it will uh, generate like short stats every second, and at the end it will like print out uh, like the result in like human readable form. Uh, I run it at the airport before I uh, before I left to this conference, so you, you can see for this query a lot of serve fails. It was probably some DNS firewall in the way. Um, <coughs> Like internally, the tool is written in C++. Uh, you need relatively new tooling. You need C++ 14, or it should work with C++ 14. But it's, it's likely that we will soon use something that requires C++ 17. Um, we use LDNS as a DNS, uh, DNS library uh, to construct the packets. And we also use UVW, which is really nice wrapper for libuv. Uh, libuv is um, like async IO framework. Uh, it's used, for instance, in not, not Resolver. It's used in Node.js. Um, it's a pretty nice library, and uh, UVW provides like pretty nice interface for C++. So, so it, it's much easier. It uses uh, lambdas. It uses um, it can handle the memory allocation for you. So, so it's pretty nice. Uh, and if you have uh, some time at the end, I'm, I might get get into some details uh, about uh, UVW. 
Um, like internally framed over, it's, it's not a rocket science. Uh, there's only, only a couple of components. Um, there's some kind of payload generator that prepares the DNS queries that will be sent. Um, then there is a traffic generator that handles the networking. Uh, so either creates TC, uh, like UDP sockets, TCP sessions, sends the queries. Um, this closely interacts with, uh, with the rate control because uh, the, the payload generator can, uh, or the, the traffic generator can send, send the queries uh, in some batches. And sometimes you won't just like put limit on, uh, on top of that. So that's, that's what the rate control is there for. And there's uh, yet another component to collect the metrics in a format that is useful, for instance, for, for like machine, machine processing. Um, so I'll talk about, about the individual comp components. Uh, the payload generators, um, these, uh, these are the ones that we, uh, we implemented. Um, the static one is the, the simplest one that I, I showed at the beginning of the quick start. It just sends uh, the query for a single, single name and type uh, on, like all over. Uh, file is another packet generator that is ex actually compatible with DNSPerf. So uh, in, for DNSPerf, you could like, um, write a text file that has uh, like record name and record type on each line. So we can process the same, same format as well. Uh, there is a generator that um, generates just random garbage, uh, non-valid DNS packets. So this, this is really, really useful. Uh, it probably will, like, won't crash your DNS server, but it's useful, for instance, if you want to test your, uh, your monitoring. Um, because what, what we realized when, when we are testing our server is that, for instance, the tooling that we use to collect metrics uh, doesn't see this kind of queries at all. Because it's not a query, it's, it's, it's malformed, and the parsers in the metrics collectors are, are not expected just just random junk um, then there are like three very similar similar generators uh, that uh, generate valid DNS packets but uh, with random uh, domain names so the number queue name just uh, uses like prepends a random numeric label uh, as a first uh, like label for the name uh, random queue name uh, does something very similar uh, but uh, it like generates again random possibly binary uh, query name. Like DNS specification says that uh, in the domain name you can have only like letters, numbers, underscore, uh, whatever. But in theory you can put even binary uh, binary in the in the query names like bi binary values. Uh, like for instance binary zero. Like most of the DNS software can handle that. Um, it's not allowed by the specification, but it's it's interesting. Uh, to play with this as well, uh, and then random label, which uh, most of the people in DNS know, like two years ago, the Mirai attacks. Um, it was essentially this, like random, uh, random uh, prefix attacks for some domains. So we can simulate this with with this payload generator as well. Um, so you generate your traffic, and this come, goes into like the traffic generator, which actually handles the the networking. Um, at the moment, the flamethrower can run only uh, in a single thread, so um, so all the like operation on, on several sockets are like um, driven by the uh, by the I/O. It's is the libuv style, like uh, asynchronous, but in a single thread. You are switching the context. Uh, the max query rate we you should expect on a single core is like 100k uh, thousand queries per second. Uh, of course, it depends whether it's on your laptop or if it's some high-end server, but it should be roughly 500,000, so it's not much, but uh, it's enough for the testing. And the main configuration options for the generator are like these, these three. Um, you can set up the number of concurrent uh, traffic generators. Um, this like, depends whether you like later pick UDP or TCP. But essentially, if you uh, create 10 for instance, uh, or I don't know, 100 um, concurrent traffic generators, it means that for UDP, uh, Flamethrower will open 100 uh, UDP sockets. Uh, so you will see the traffic coming for, from 100 random ports. If you do this for TCP, it will open 100 connections, and it will try to keep these connections alive. Uh, so whenever the server closes the connection, it will like, reopen an, a new one. But there should be like 100 connections all the time open. And then you are sending like batches of queries on these either like UDP sockets or TCP sessions or TCP connections. 
So this is configured by the uh, next two uh, arguments, the dash Q, which is the number of queries to send in a batch, and then there is a delay to wait for the next batch. Um, so for instance, if you want to send 1,000 queries per second, you can have, I don't know, 10 concurrent generators, which, which gives 100 QPS per, uh, per, per the generator, and uh, you can set up the generator to send uh, 10 queries every 100 milliseconds, and you get, as a result, 1,000 QPS. Um, there's also the, the, the rate control that I mentioned. Uh, so this is how you can like um, cut, uh, cut the, the rate of the queries uh, in case the generator is too fast. Um, you can either set it constantly for a constant rate, or you can uh, write like a QP, define like QPS flow, so you can always set like uh, the rate you, you want to see on, uh, on the output and the duration in milliseconds. So uh, this is actually what you see, so see on the graph below. You can, for instance, uh, create, these, create these peaks. So there is uh, like 2,000 queries per second for, six, uh, for 60 seconds, then 100 queries per second for 60 seconds, uh, repeating. So um, this is from one of our testing servers. There was some nom nominal traffic for, of 600 QPS. Uh, like this is the first, uh, first, uh, first minute. And the second minute is, is like back to the 100, and, and so on and so on. Uh, yeah, we don't sample. We sample the, 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 the rate at 30 seconds, so it looks uh, like this. But uh, yeah. Um, then the metrics. Um, so I've already shown you at the beginning how the, the out output for, for humans uh, look like. Um, but if you run Flame with dash O, uh, it will print out a JSON, like the, the, the results in JSON into the file. So you will have, uh, for each second, you will have a, uh, one line of JSON that essentially contains uh, everything you see uh, in the like human form at the end. Um, but you will get, get get the same information for for each second. So you can see like the development uh, during during the run of the flame, and. Uh, we, for instance, feed this into the Elasticsearch, uh, and you can later do some visualizations based on, uh, based on that. Um, I didn't include it in the slides because I didn't find uh, something really interesting. Um, but yeah, so just so we have some idea, it, it supports uh, JSON. Um, here are some examples. Um, simple one that uses the, the DNS perf input format. Uh, I included some some description like uh, how it will um, what, what it will end up doing. So in the first case, you're opening like uh, it's on UDP. You're opening um, 100 source ports or source uh, source sockets, and you will send 10 queries uh, each 500 milliseconds, uh, which will end up with 2,000 QPS. Um, here, the second one is slightly more complicated. It, it uses uh, the QPS flow, and it's, it's to simulate some, some kind of peak. So you start with uh, 10,000 QPS for five seconds, then decaying to 5,000 QPS, 250, and so on. And then there is some like 1,000 QPS uh, at event for 40, for 40 seconds. So in the end, it will run one minute, but you will have some, some peak of traffic. Uh, you can use it to simulate, uh, I don't know, cold cache. Um, or some failover. And uh, yeah, the last one just shows uh, sending like r random garbage on, on TCP uh, with some rate like 1,000 QPS. Um, yeah, we have some ideas to, to improve this, this tool f further. Uh, we definitely want to improve the, improve the use of the resources on, on the, uh, the machine. So we want to support uh, multiple CPUs. Um, <coughs> We want to be able to tar target multiple servers or IP range uh, within a single run. Uh, we wanted to spoof the source, source address uh, because uh, this is useful for testing as well. Uh, we'll probably add DNS over TLS, DNS over HTTP uh, if someone has a need for, for that. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, query, query rate uh, is something that we control only with this QPS flow or, or like static, configure statically at the beginning. So we were looking into like extracting, for instance, the rate from from PCAP and then just uh, pretending uh, pretending that the rate is the same, 
And of course, like this is this this used to be, um, or we started this um, to test particular features. We didn't focus on performance, so maybe maybe that's um, maybe that's something uh, something we might fo focus on. And overall, overall, it like the tool needs some some cleanup. It's not really a state of the art C++ because we were all learning C++ at the time, and people from multiple teams contributed uh, contributed the code. <coughs> So yeah, uh, that's it. Um, thank you, and uh, I'll be happy to answer questions, and I will be also happy to uh, talk to you on a GitHub if you send, a, send us some PR. Any questions for Jan? Yes, Matthijs? Both. <laughs> uh, yeah, sorry, sorry. I, I should repeat a question. Uh, uh, I was talking about uh, QPS, and uh, you, uh, you were interested whether it's UDP or TCP. Like it can it can really generate uh, the same QPS on TCP as well. Um, it can. Uh, I didn't mention that explicitly, but it can. Uh, it effectively does TCP pipelining. It opens the connection and tries to uh, keep the connection open uh, for the whole run. So so you're just then sending the burst of packets. So that's essentially the pipelining. And if the server closes the connection, Flame will reopen it, uh, a new one. Um, but uh, the overhead of opening the connection is not that high. So you can really generate like uh, thousands of QPS on TCP if the server is able to respond. And, and uh, can you run Flame Toro in a mode to find that feed of your end server? Or is it just uh, this flow and then it ends? Uh, or can you like, <laughs> it and then you notice this uh, cross? Yeah. Can, can, can I run Flame Trouble to find this peak where uh, like the server stops being able to respond on, on TCP or UDP? Uh, no, you can't. You have to do it manually. But it's, it's actually a nice, nice uh, feature request. That's what the NSPR for. The NSPR for. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, small uh, feature request. Um, uh, I would say do not focus so much on the, the high performance stuff because everyone is always focusing on the high performance stuff. And no one here ever runs a name server that does 2 million QPS. Um, but we do want to run DNS over TLS really well, and we want to run DNS over HTTPS really well. And it turns out that those two protocols have a lot of modes. So we can have many connections. Uh, we can have connections that we keep alive for a long time. We have, can have connections that come with tickets and that resume. We have all kinds of TLS modes, with zero RTT and stuff. What the world super duper needs right now is a testing engine that can exercise all these modes because we don't yet know what the browsers are going to do. And because we don't know, we would love to have a tool that allows us to explore that landscape. So here is my feature request. And if you do it, we would love to help. Yeah, that's cool. Okay. You have a question? Thank you. Uh, one comment and one question. Are uh, really waiting for the, uh, uh, to import pickup real traffic for, for the testing? And the second, the question is, uh, like in, in DNS perf, there was like a maximum number of <laughs> outstanding queries, so where it's throttled. Until the names are responded again, do you have like some such similar? No, uh, no. There is no way. No, it will just uh, like it. It tracks the the number. Like internally, we know the number, but uh, there is no functional that would like uh, stop sending queries if there is some amount of outstanding ones <laughs> in flight. Any other questions? Ah, uh, Martin. Hi, thanks for the call. So I'm not so much of a DNS expert, but uh, know, know a bit about load testing. Um, you may want to consider to print out the percentile instead of the average for your response times, because the average usually doesn't tell you anything at all. Yeah, yeah. Just as an idea. Yeah, like uh, in this in this JSON format, you will see the actual values. So if you want to do some post aggregation on top of that, you can. Uh, so for each request, it will return. Not for each request, uh, but you will see current stats for each second, and there is a there is the, there is always a current like query rate and current response rate, and the number of, uh, for instance, time uh, uh, queries that timed out during that second. So I think you should be able to get a number you want. That is a good point. Thank you. <laughs> I, have to, I have the last question over here. 
Um, well, maybe it's more or less a feature request. I'm sorry for that. But um, did you ever consider uh, not only checking the uh, result code, but also some other expected patterns in the answers? Yeah. Because, <laughs> of course, some bugs only pop up under high pressure. Yeah, you're right. Uh, no, we are checking only for, for the response codes. Uh, we are not checking any other content in a, in a packet. We could probably do that. Yeah, I don't know if it's useful. Okay, thank cool. you. Thank you.